here we are. This is going to be a dry composting toilet. And as you can see, I've got some reclaimed uh, joist timbers here. Um, I've made it into an equilateral triangle. Uh, and there's quite a lot of speculation as to how I'm going to do it, but generally, I've measured the inside of the triangle rather than the outside at 400, leaving, if I can show you, enough overhang here so that ultimately when I cut out my sections they will sit inside and also a section here so that I can drop the, lower, the level as minimally as possible. Uh, that is to obtain a maximum height so that I can place under here um, compost bins which will fill up with few manure. So this will be the dry composting toilet area. Bins that maybe I can pull out through side entrances from both sides. Um, using green woodworking techniques so I won't use any metal on this, no nails or screws, but what I will use are specialist tools and pegs. And unfortunately I lost my side axe, it went missing years ago when I brought them over. Or if I did actually bring them over. And um, such tools as uh, these very nice chisels you see this is an ad curved blade and these are for making pegs with different diameters and that's a typical example of a peg this is good oak wood these are good for making pegs because when you're working with green wood as opposed to what I'm working with here these are very seasoned old joists but when you're working with green wood you drill a hole as with one of these all the way through and you can literally pin it the two together um, and with a finished round peg as such you would pin the two joists together. Now, in this particular case, I will normally be working with round wood. And round wood would be green if it's just been cut, which means these drills would go through it like butter if they're sharp. But I'm working with hardwood here, so I may have to use power tools to be able to drill these holes, but we'll see. Um, I still have to make enough pegs to pin basically the three corners together and as you can see I've rendered the wall on that side I need to finish off the edge to make it look nice and to provide a continuum of what I've already done where the rabbit manure is on the further side. Green woodworking techniques I've already started collecting fresh cut olive wood which will make the structure over the top and this obviously is the central beam here to provide a floor um, infrastructure so I will be needing to go across now there are options here what I can use if I take you over to my into the ark I call this the ark because it looks like a boat but at the same time it looks like a church and you can see this material here which is quite old now but this is the flower spike of an Garvey cactus and I've used them over there in a the distance as you can see to create a tower at the end of the food tunnel these can well we'll see because structurally they're more stronger than the ground they're maybe um, sawn timber because sawn timber cuts through the grain whereas the grain here runs all the way along which is why that structure over there at the end of the food tunnel 
uh, is incredibly strong after three years and yet these things look like paper then they're in fact hollow inside and provide a haven for huge amounts of uh, insects so this would be a permanent fixture but the floor could be replaceable after every three or four years depending on how much weight damage is put on it but if I continue to build the structure over the top to keep it waterproof it may even last longer and the trick with green woodworking is to make sure that you choose woods which are naturally preserved now these are indoor uh, these were indoor joists which means that they've probably not been preserved or if they have any preservative it's um, already left the way to actually deal with either softwoods that rot faster or unpreserved woods um, is to oil them rather than put in um, sealants and stuff like that varnishes on them um, and I have enough oil here on the farm obviously to be able to do that so that could be one stage which uh, uh, I would do before I put the um, user toilet and for the structure over the top I will use freshly cut green wood from olive now you get a lot of this new shoots coming up and it will almost be like a bender only on the basis that I don't really have I don't really have um, any more timber because it's actually quite expensive and I, my brother gave me those from his old house but even stuff like this, this is wood in the green which was torn off by the, the heavy winds we had recently could come into some useful effect so let's go back to our structure and as you can see I will be approaching it from the side where there will be a set of steps probably one on either side it's an equilateral triangle and there will be a post in the middle to define that the circle which will run around all three corners yeah and then I will take the golden mean which is the ratio of the greater part to the minor part as equal to the whole to the greater part so I'm only going to say that once and it's a point which is irrational it's what you call an irrational number which means it's infinite it's like pi and there is a name for it in in the Greek alphabet it's called phi it's also called the golden section so the idea is, is that I've taken an equilateral triangle from the inside here at 400 all the way around and a golden mean will cut across here at some point so that the division of these beams is accorded to those ratios I've just told you and it's about here so this is where my stairs will be coming in and I will probably place a door right on that golden mean point yeah. now it's no point trying to do it too mathematically because you probably it can never be truly accurate even if you use computers someone um, some Japanese man um, was still searching for the ultimate golden mean uh, number by 58 million places after the decimal it's an infinite number it's irrational so here will be a door two steps coming in either side It'll be two toilets probably a um, a bad a, a toilet for for um, I would say human manure which is um, untreated and has contaminants in and the human manure for people who know how to poop and there will be a urinal on this side where I keep my biochar yeah which will absorb any urine and it will flow straight into the um, heap of biochar which I'm keeping here in order to charge it up so that I can use it 
for digging into the ground and providing nutrients for new, newly planted trees. So there will be a urinal section here also. In effect, what we may be seeing is like a male-female toilet, though that's not what I really want. But considering that um, many women use contraception of one sort or another, many people in general just use antibiotics. I don't want that going into my human ewer. So most certainly, and this will be my toilet, because I take no medicines and I take no antibiotics, no pharmaceuticals at all. This will be my side, and I will be collecting, as with a square bin here, which I can move out and move in. I may actually dig down into the ground a little bit more. So a structure over the top to give privacy, but this probably will make a big difference on the land. Considering the wind is coming this way, it will provide even more shelter for my wind tunnel, which got partly damaged the other day, with gusts well over 150 kilometers an hour. And that's why I have the windbreak over there or along that fence. So um, the possibility is to create um, a very um, permeable structure, which means wind can go through it and it slows it down. And that's the basis of a wind hedge to prevent, um, not to completely prevent the wind from passing through, but to slow it down. And when this is all pinned together, as here as well, I can show you that. Um, rather than one beam moving, the whole structure would have to move and by then it would be too heavy for it to be able to move under extreme uh, windy conditions. This must be level, I hope. That should be easy enough. I can easily drop that end where the three timbers will come together, where the three joists will come together and then build a tower around here with probably a partition in the middle to allow it some sort of movement or rocking if there is any uh, wind on the day. But it would be just a, an ornamental square or even a triangular structure around these three joists that are coming together.